May the sweet aroma of Christ accompany you. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, may the fragrance of God follow you. Give it up to the Lord. Give it up to him tonight. Give it up to him tonight. Just give it up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I want to thank God for that sweet worship. God bless your precious voices. Let's give them a clap of praise. Hallelujah. You're welcome tonight to this hour of discovery. Let me welcome your neighbor. Say you're welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Glory. Please may be seated in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I'm too blessed. I'm too glad you're in church tonight. What a privilege to be in his presence. Glory to God. There's no better place to be than to be in God's presence with God's people. Doing the right thing at the right time. Hallelujah. Wow. So let me welcome you all once again and all our online viewers and members. We thank God for your life. I trust you've had a beautiful and a great week. And I'm believing and trusting God. And that which God has begun to do in our lives, in your lives, in your family, in your businesses, in the works of your hand and your careers shall be perfected in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening, by the grace of God, you will recall that I introduced us to the prophetic word that the Lord gave us as a people collective during the conference. And on Sunday, we just tried to, I tried to bring you up to speed by recounting some of the things the Lord said to us in the early part of the year. But tonight, by the grace of God, we'll be diving and digging deep and looking at what the prophetic word is to us. Hallelujah. The prophetic word was given to us to recalibrate our faith. Hallelujah. Because when God was speaking to us in January and said it was a year of consolidation from the book of Habakkuk, the nation of Israel was in a turmoil and the prophet couldn't bear it and he began to ask questions. And God answered him. The first answer was in Habakkuk 1, verse 5. And then, still the prophet was not satisfied. He kept on complaining, and God gave him the second answer in chapter number 2. Habakkuk 1, 5. I'm reading this so that you know that if there are complaints, if there are things that are happening around you that you are uncomfortable with, so it was to the children of Israel. In the time of the prophet Habakkuk. And God said to him, as he's saying to you tonight, look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded. For I am doing a work in your days that you will not believe if I told you. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Do I have a believer in the house? He says, I'm doing a work in your days that you will not believe if told. In other words, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the voidness, you will also recall in Genesis that the earth was void. It was null. It was formless. In the midst of the things that do not make a meaning around you, you're looking around and your life does not seem to be having a meaning. You're looking at your career progression and you're wondering, for how long is this going to be? 
You are looking at your family life and you are wondering, when will God arise on my behalf? God says, look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded. For I'm doing a work in your days that even if you are told, you will not believe. Hallelujah. Out of the rubbles of your environment, God will make a meaning. Out of the mess that you are encountering all around, whether in your academics or in your career, God has a message for you in that mess. And my desire and prayer is you will discover that message in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The prophet kept on complaining. And in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, verse 1 ended his second complaint. It says, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower. Hallelujah. This is talking about accurate positioning. In the season we are in, you must position yourself accurately. Hallelujah. There is a place for you to position yourself. There is how you ought to adjust yourself. There is how you need to check what you are standing on. There is how you want to check what you are believing. It says, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower. And I will look out to see what he will say to me. Hallelujah. And what I will answer concerning my complaint. In other words, I will hear what God has to say to me. Glory to God. If you are not accurately positioned, God may be speaking and you may not hear. Can I have an amen? So he says, I will stand. I will take my stand. Let me tell your neighbor, you must take your stand. You must take your stand. Hallelujah. At my watch post. You must become a watchman. A watchman. If you have been to military formations, the military are always on guard. And that was the principle that the children of Israel lived by. In those days, you will have a city, have a wall around the entire city. And then what will happen? At the corners of the village or the city, you have watch posts, watch towers. And then you have sentry called guards. They'll be rotating every eight hours, every 12 hours, every 24 hours. And they'll be changing their duty. And when you're on duty, you are keeping watch over the walls of the city to ensure that you can see when an intruder is far away. And then you can notify the army. Can I have an amen? May you not sleep on duty. I said, may you not sleep on duty. I will take my stand at my watch post and I will station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me. Listen, when people speak, is it not, what do we do when people speak? Huh? We listen. We hear. Isn't it? When people speak, you... But look at what the prophet said. I will look out to see. He didn't say to hear. I will look out to see what he will say. When God is speaking, what are you hearing? The hearing is just a gateway to your heart, to your mind, so that you can paint an accurate picture of what he's saying to you. He says, I will look out to see what he will say to me. When God speaks, he wants you to form a picture Hallelujah. He wants you to form a picture, an accurate picture of what he's saying about your destiny. We are told that words were originally meant for what? Creation. Words, they are meant for creation. And your mind is the engine room for creativity. So when God speaks, he wants you to convert. And I've taught you this over so many years. So when God speaks, you must convert what he's saying to images in your heart. It is those images that your heart, your mind, your soul 
and everything around you works together to form to become your reality. Can I have an amen? He says, I will look out to see what he will say to me. Many times, many of you see, or you hear what he's saying, and the reason why the birds of the air come to pick them up and eat them up is because you have not allowed them to form an image in your mind. Can I have an amen? Can I have a big amen? amen. Is somebody here tonight? Are you following this principle? The first one is you must position yourself accurately. In other words, you can't afford to be distracted. You cannot. When you are in church or you are listening to the word of God, you must pay attention. You must take your position. Accurately position yourself and then look out to see what he will say to you. And I will, what he will answer concerning my complaint. Glory to God. Verse 2. Let's read verse 2. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. God is saying, he's about to say something, and then he makes it clear. He says, write the vision. In other words, what he's saying, confirming what the principle I just explained to you, you are to make it form a vision in your heart. When God is going to give you a vision, he may just speak a word into your spirit. Just one word is more than enough. And I pray that you will not miss out on your own word of destiny. In the name of Jesus. Write the vision, make his play on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still, the vision always is appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. God's vision over your life will not lie. I said his prophetic word over your life will not turn out to be a lie. In the name of Jesus. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Verse number four. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him. But the righteous shall live by his faith. If you are a man who does not look out to see what God is saying, if you are a man who is not accurately positioned to be able to see what he will say to you, if you are a man who will not write the vision down, your soul is puffed up. Can I have an amen? amen. Glory to God. Because you are looking for what is not lost. He has already given you what you need, and yet you are still searching for the needle in the haystack. But the righteous shall live by his faith. Amplified classic, verse number four. Hallelujah. Look at the proud. His soul is not straight or right within him. May your heart be right with God. I said, may your, may your heart be right in the name of Jesus. But the rigidly just and the uncompromisingly righteous man, woman, boy, girl, shall live by his faith and in his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I read this background to give us, I read this scripture to give us a background because that's our foundational text for the year. So, God gave us a prophetic word from two passages. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 12 to 17, and Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 to 23. The paraphrase and summary of the word is that you and I must become diffusers of the aroma of God. And as we begin to diffuse the fragrance of God, the aroma of God, what will happen? Ten men shall take hold. Peoples and nations shall gather. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 8. But it's contingent upon what happens in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So tonight, by the grace of God, 
I'll be ministering on the subject, entering into the fullness of your consolidation. Entering into the fullness of your consolidation. In the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We want to look out to see what he's saying to us. We must position ourselves accurately. When I came to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was opened for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. Verse, but thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him in Utaku, in Jahiwan, in Jahitu, in Lokongoma, in Maitama 1, Maitama 2, hallelujah. That through us he will spread the fragrance of the knowledge of him where? Where? For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved. And among those who are perishing, to one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God we speak in Christ. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we are going to do a systematic delivery because we must look out to see what he's saying to us. Number one, there are seven things that I believe the Lord will have us look at from this passage. If we are to position ourselves accurately to be able to see what he's saying to us. So that the prophetic word that he has declared over our lives as a corporate entity and over us as families and individuals may find expression and become our reality in the name of Jesus. Number one, God will be open, opening doors of opportunities for you. Hallelujah. I said God will be opening doors of opportunities for us in the name of Jesus. Verse 12 says, when I came to trust to preach, even though a door was opened for me in the Lord. May you discover those doors. I said, may you discover those doors in the name of Jesus. The door, may doors of ministry be open to you. May business doors be open to you. May career doors be opened unto you in the name of Jesus. It says, door was opened for me in the Lord. Give us a New Living Translation. God will open those doors. But friends, listen. It's not every door that God opens that leads to destiny. Like we had. When I came to trust to preach the good news of Christ, the Lord opened a door of opportunity for me. Verse 13. But I had no peace of mind because my dear brother Titus had not yet arrived with a report from you. So I said goodbye and went on to Macedonia to find him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My pastor said peace of mind. Rest in your spirit. Is what? Is the umpire of the will of God. Hallelujah. Is the umpire of the will of God. Many years ago as we started this ministry, these were some of the foundational words that God gave me. 
And one of our conferences we titled Umpires of Destiny. Can I have an amen? The very first conference, the very first anniversary. Umpires of Destiny. The peace of God is one of the umpires of your destiny, of the will of God. When there is no peace in your heart, even though God has opened the opportunity, you better know that he's testing your heart. Glory to God. It may just be a test to prove what is in your heart, whether you are led by the Spirit or you are an opportunist. We are not opportunists. Can I have an amen? We just don't jump at every opportunity. There are some doors, they open to the outside. Not all doors open inside. Can I have an amen? amen? There are some doors that when you open and enter into them, you shut yourself out of destiny. So we are not opportunists. So the peace of God, he said, there was no rest in my spirit. And as a result, even though the door that was open was opened by the Lord for me to preach the good news, but... Because I did not find Titus, my brother, there. There was no witness in his spirit. There was restlessness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of you have ever wanted to take a decision? You have been believing God for something. And then some, somebody quickly showed up. And this happens to sisters. Pardon me. Hallelujah. They have been waiting and waiting upon God for somebody to show up. And then somebody shows up. And what happens? They say, yes, the Lord has done it, hallelujah, without checking. And yet, in their heart, their heart will be palpitating. Bah, 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 bah. Anytime you are with this brother, your heart is always, but because you have been waiting for so long, you just feel, I beg, let's go on, Jerry. Hallelujah. Even the door, even the devil opens doors of opportunities. We are not opportunists. We are people that are led by the Spirit of God. May the peace of God keep your heart in the name of Jesus. May your heartometer become recalibrated in the mighty name of Jesus. Your heartometer is what I call the device which is your heart, how it measures the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's just my invention. I coined the word, hatometer. God wants to recalibrate our hatometers. Do you know that you can be doing something that you know is wrong, and yet your heart feels no pinch? It's because your heart, your hatometer needs recalibration. It needs to be resensitized. Those of us that work with instruments, whether electrical instruments or pressure measuring instruments or mechanical equipment, if you have not used it for some time, it loses its accuracy. So you have to recalibrate it so that it can give you accurate reading. Many times, and the reason why you keep hearing the word, and where you keep hearing the word, faith comes by hearing, by hearing, not by heart. Not by heart, but by hearing the word. Is so that your heart can stay calibrated. Can I have an Amen. May your heart continue to be sensitive to God. In the name of Jesus. Because I did not find my brother there. He did not stay but proceeded unto Macedonia. We are not opportunists. As God opens the doors of opportunities for us. May our eyes and our hearts be trained. To recognize that which is God in Jesus name. And if God is testing your heart, whether you are led by opportunity or by his spirit, may you not fail his test. In the name of Jesus. Number two. The second thing that we need to take note of is that God wants us to be captives, to be his captives. So that he can lead us as part of Christ's triumphal procession. God wants us to be his captives so that he can lead us as part of Christ's triumphal procession. God wants us to be his captives so that he can lead us as part of Christ's triumphal procession. Verse 14, 2 Corinthians verse 14, 2, chapter 2, verse 14. But thank God he has made us his what? 
captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Give me the NIV. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives. The reason why many of us are not spreading his aroma is because we have not yet become his captives. Hallelujah. Can I have an amen? And that's why it's easy for you to be somebody else at work. It's easy for you to be somebody else in your compound than it is easy for you to be somebody else in church. Because you have not yet become his captives. If you are not his captive, you cannot be led in triumphal procession. Hallelujah. If he has not captivated your heart, if he has not captured your heart, if you are not abiding in him and he in you, he cannot use you. He says, always leads, who always leads us? Are you always available to be led by him? And uses us. Have you made yourself available for him to use you anytime or anyhow he wants? If you have not, it's because you are not yet his captives. Can I have an amen? When you become a captive of God, like somebody who is in captivity, who has been captured by God, then it's easy for him to use you. Hallelujah. Always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of Christ. Shout hallelujah. Listen, that word captives means to be one with. It means to be in union with God. In union with Christ. It means to be joined closely to. Captive. It is a marker of close personal association. A marker of close personal association. Who always leads us as captives. It means you are in close association with Christ. You are almost inseparable. Just as in John chapter 15 verse 4. John 15 4. Abide in me and I in you. That's what the close association is talking about. Is he abiding in you? The reason why he's not able to use us to spread his fragrance is because we are not in close association with him. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Hallelujah. Unless it abides in the vine and neither can you unless you abide in the reason why he's not able to use us is because we have not become his captives. If we are going to be used to spread forth his fragrance, then we must become his captives. Shout hallelujah. We must become one in close association. In close association with him. We must become one with him. We must abide in him and he in us. Glory to God. Number three. Number three, remember that number one, God will open doors of opportunities to us. Number two, he wants us to be his captives so that he can lead us as part of Christ's triumphal procession. Number three, God wants to use us to spread the fragrance, the aroma of his knowledge everywhere. Everywhere. Especially in our spheres of influence. God wants to use us. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. It's an old song that we used to sing. But now, you know, the table has turned. People now want to use God. The norm now is people want to use God to achieve their end. They want to use God like tissue paper and then, you know, that's it. They have not made themselves as captives. Rather, they want to use God to rubber stamp what it is they want to do. God wants to use us to spread the fragrance or the aroma of his knowledge everywhere, especially in our spheres of influence. The same verse 14, the B part of verse 14, 2 Corinthians 2, 
But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphant possession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. God wants to use us. Are you ready to be used by God? Are you ready to release yourself to be used by him? If you are not full of use for God, you are less of use. Can I have an amen? amen. If you are not full of use, and what's that? Useful, isn't it? Useful. Useful means you are full of use. If you are not full of use, and you are less of use, it means you are... Hallelujah. Let me ask your neighbor, are you useful... Are you full of use or less of use? Are you full of use or less of use? If you are not full of use, you are less of use. It means you are useless. Hallelujah. May we not be useless to God. May we not be useless to God. May I not be useless to God. But may I be useful in God's hand. In the name of Jesus. God wants to use us to spread his aroma. And we saw the last words in that passage everywhere. Not just in a place. Not just at home. In your school. In your neighborhood. Within your family. Amongst your in-laws. He wants to use you to spread his aroma. The aroma of the knowledge of him. When you show up, people will say, there's just something different about you. Because you are carrying a fragrance. Hallelujah. You enter a place and there's, where there is confusion and tranquility sets in. The peace of God just comes. You enter a home where there is an upheaval, where it's always hot, and the peace of God just comes. Hallelujah. You enter the boardroom to attend or, or to, 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 to speak in the boardroom and everybody who have been drawing daggers come down because you bring a different fragrance. May that be your testimony. I said, may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you find yourself, everywhere you go, may you spread forth the aroma of Christ in the name of Jesus. May you bring peace into where you go. May you bring forth the aroma of peace, the aroma of favor, the aroma of grace in the name of Jesus. May you sp spread forth the aroma of God's love in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that we may spread forth the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. It's only, not only when you are in church that people know you are a believer. And then it's time to pray. And you are praying. And then <laughs> you go out there. And there is no aroma. Hallelujah. There's what is called Odo Parfum. And there is Odo. Eh? Odo Toilette. What's the difference? Please tell me, what's the difference between eau de parfum and eau de toilette? Parfum is what? Stronger than... Okay. One lasts longer than the other. And there are some perfumes for the next 24 hours, even 48 hours. You wash your clothes, the perfume is still there. Can I have an amen? And there are some, you, you can empty the bottle. By the time you get out into the car... Nobody will even know you carry anything. Let me ask you, but which one are you? Eau de parfum or eau de toilette? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants us to spread for that aroma everywhere. The one that is eau de toilette, the moment you enter your car or even enter public transport, don't even talk about it. In fact, the breeze from the, your house to the car park has blown everything off. They won't even know you put on perfume. It's your B.O. that will be the new fragrance. You know what B.O. means. Don't say it. Hallelujah. Friends, he wants to use us to spread the aroma everywhere. Everywhere you go. 
May the sweet aroma of Christ accompany you. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, may the fragrance of God follow you. May you spread for that fragrance everywhere. In school, at home, in your working place, in your neighborhood. May God use you to spread forth his fragrance. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere he wants you to spread forth his fragrance. Number four. This fragrance that we will spread will manifest in two dimensions. In two dimensions. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 15 and 16. Let's see the two dimensions of manifestation of this fragrance. Amplified classic. Thank you. Let's look at it in the Amplified. Let's amplify what it's saying. For we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which exhales unto God, discernible alike, in other words, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Hallelujah. And it's amazing how these two dimensions manifest. To the one, to the latter, it is an aroma wafted from death to death, a fatal odor, the smell of doom. Some by the aroma of Christ that you carry, when they see you, it's a fatal odor. It's a smell of doom. To the former, it is a aroma from life to life, a vital fragrance, living and fresh. Hallelujah. Those are the two dimensions. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Can I break this down for you simply? This fragrance you are carrying is in two dimensions. One is an aroma. Some will discern it. Give me verse 15. It's the same aroma, but the Bible says, discernible alike among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the latter, to those who are perishing, is an aroma from death to death. Hallelujah. In other words, it's a fatal odor. It's a smell of doom. And to the former, those who are being saved, is an aroma from life to life. A vital fragrance, living and fresh. Now, hear this. When you are amongst those who are perishing, this aroma will manifest in hatred. It will manifest in repulsion. It will manifest in distancing. They don't want to move near you. Say, that guy, don't, I just don't like him. I just don't like him. Some will just hate you. That man, I beg, I beg, I beg. I don't want to see him face. Why are you put him for this committee now? Because the aroma you carry manifests in two dimensions. Hallelujah. And to the former, those who are being saved, <laughs> is accompanied by what? Favor. It's accompanied by acceptance. It's accompanied by, look, they will become your customer for life. Anything they want, even if you are selling it at 10 naira above every other person, it's you they will come to. Can I have an amen? Do you understand what we are saying? That's the way this aroma manifests. So, when you carry that aroma, everybody will not accept you. Some will hate you for the fragrance that you carry. They don't want to see your face. What should you do? Just move on. That's why everybody cannot be your customer. Can I have an amen? Is it true that everybody will be your customer? No. I oftentimes say this, and I love our brethren from the east for it. You see the line of those selling tiles. Where Bro Austin is the chief of them. Can I have an amen? You see the line of those selling. Look, and along that line, there is no acrimony. If you leave one shop, you go to the next shop and price. You go to the next shop and price. Your customer is your customer. Can I have an amen? There are those that your aroma will attract. They'll just fall in love with you. It's not the environment. It's not because you make the place look nice and there is AC. No! It's the aroma you are carrying. They will go everywhere. They will still come back. I say, now nah, you I won't buy from. Oh, but what do you go do for me now? 
give me a small discount. I see I'm for that place, then give me for one five. Oh, but your own is 2,000, but I want to buy from you. Can I have an amen? Because your aroma is attracting them. They are the candidates of heaven. There are those that are being saved. Your old dog will be attractive to them. It's a vital fragrance, living and fresh. And there are those, once they enter your shop, they say, ah, wait till you get here. Ah, I maybe, maybe they go. You see, they're down, let's stay now. You don't, they go. It's because what you are carrying is death to him. It's perishing. It's not ready. And there is no argument. Just let them go. Shout hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? Yeah. Do you understand? Give me NIV, verse 15 and 16. From 15. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Verse 16. To the one where an aroma that brings worth it reminds them of their condemnation. It reminds them of death. It reminds them of their eternal doom. To the other, an aroma that brings life. And you must discern. Whether, listen, I'm not, you know, we've led the realm of ministry. Preaching the gospel. We're not talking of your businesses. So that you can recognize these things. There are some departments they will post you to. The manager you have to work with doesn't want to see your face. Whereas where you are coming from, you are the toast of everybody. When you get to such departments, behave yourself wisely, as David did. When he found himself in the court of King Saul, where arrows and javelins were being thrown at him, he behaved himself wisely. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have a big Amen. When you are in such a place, just hide yourself. Don't even show yourself. Behave yourself wisely. Because the aroma you are carrying is manifesting in the dimension of death to that man. The best you can do is pray for his soul. Can I have an amen? amen. Don't force anything. Say, my boss doesn't like me. What will I do? There's nothing you can do. Just keep praying for him. Because he's a candidate for perishing. Can I have an amen? Amen. The aroma you carry manifests in two dimensions. One, death to death, the other to life. And it, you will do well if you discern the environment you are in. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 16, let's go to number 5. Look at the second part of that verse 16. To the one, we are an aroma that brings death. To the other, an aroma that brings life. And who is equal to such a task? Number 5. Are we equal to such a task? Number five. The fifth point I want you to note. Are we equal to such a task? No, we are not in ourselves. It says, who is equal to such a task? Give me the ESV. ESV, verse 16. Who is equal to such a task? Who is sufficient for these things? Are you sufficient for these things? He's asking. Are we equal to such a task? No. We are not in ourselves. But our sufficiency is from God. As sufficient ministers of a new covenant. Can I have an amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves. Hallelujah. To claim anything as coming from us. But our sufficiency is from who has made us. Verse 6. Our sufficiency is from God who has made us. Verse number 6. Jump to verse 6. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. Not of the letter but of the spirit. For the letter kills. But the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? We are not equal to this task by ourselves. We are not sufficient for ourselves. To spread for the fragrance of God, no be joke. You are not sufficient by yourself. You are not equal to the task. But our sufficiency is of God. Hallelujah. I say our sufficiency is of God. 
our sufficiency is from God. In the name of Jesus. He's the one who can make you sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. Time will not permit me. I would have loved to take you to the book of Acts to see the brother named Apollos. Your sufficiency is not in yourself. It's only the Holy Ghost that can empower us to be sufficient. Shout hallelujah. Apollos was a man that was mighty in words. Acts 18, Acts 19. A man that was a man of the letters. But he only knew of the baptismal of John. His revelation knowledge was limited. Hallelujah. So what he was teaching the people was the letter. There was no spirit. And the Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit kills like. He took, he was a minister, but a minister of the letter. It will take Aquila and Priscilla to call him aside and to teach him the way of the Lord more accurately. Shout hallelujah. He only knew about the letter. And when Paul, in Acts 19, in Acts 18, he did a lot of work, a lot of ministry, but he didn't even teach them about Christ. He only knew about the baptismal of John. So when Paul got to, in Acts 19, give me Acts 19 from verse 1. It was in this same Corinthians. Give me 18.1. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. And then what happened? He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no. We have not even heard that there is a... Say, we have not even heard. Talk less of receive him. He said to them, did you... Then verse 3. Into what then were you baptized? They said into John's baptism. They only knew of the letter. They didn't know about the spirit. Verse 4. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him. That is Jesus. He was only a forerunner. What he was doing was to prepare the hearts of the people to receive Christ. And on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But the only thing that Apollos knew was the baptismal and the gospel according to John the Baptist. Aquila and Priscilla in Acts 18 had to take him aside to teach him the way of the Lord more accurately. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then verse 6, and upon that, Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. And the number of them were about 12 men in all. Shout hallelujah. There's a difference between the spirit and the letter. Who is equal to the task? Are we sufficient for this? No! Our sufficiency must be of God. Shout hallelujah. I pray that God will be your sufficiency. I pray that you will not be a man that ministers only of the letter, but that of the spirit in the name of Jesus. God, may, may the Lord make you sufficient ministers of the new covenant. In the name of Jesus. What he requires is that we yield ourselves as his captives so that he can use us. Give me Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Let's read from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2. From verse 19 as a matter of fact. From verse 19. For though through the law I died to the law that I might what? Live to God. That I might live to God. I'm dead to the law. You are dead to the old man that you may live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live. But Christ who lives where? He lives in me. He lives in you. Look, is Christ living in you? Are you conscious that he's living in you? 
And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by what? By faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21. And I do not frustrate. I do not nullify the grace of God. The NIV says I do not frustrate the grace of God. Hallelujah. You will be frustrating and nullifying the grace of God when you live or you are a minister of the letters. I do not set aside the grace of God. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not nullify. Can the grace of God be nullified? Yes, it can. Can I have an amen? May you not frustrate the grace of God. May you not nullify the grace of God upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we equal to such a task? No, not ourselves. But our sufficiency must be from God. Hallelujah. Who has made us sufficient ministers of a new covenant. Number six. Number six. The sixth point. In doing so, we must never be like many who make a trade of peddling God's word for profit, shortchanging and adulterating the divine message for profit. Number six, in doing so, in other words, if we become sufficient ministers of the new covenant, if we are not equal to the task by our own sufficiency, we must never be like many who make a trade of peddling God's word for profit. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. Hallelujah. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. Hallelujah. We do not peddle the word of God for profit. Freely you have received. Freely give. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The greatest treasure that a man can receive is life in Christ. If you have received it freely, why don't you give it freely? Hallelujah. Give me the amplified classic version. For we are not like so many like hawk stars making a trade off, peddling God's word, shortchanging and adulterating the divine message. Hallelujah. For we are not like so many. These words bring comfort to the heart because there is nothing new under the heaven. Can I have an amen? There is nothing new under the heaven. How must we be then? Number seven. How must we be then? We must be men of sincerity. You must be sincere in all your actions. You must be sincere in your dealings with God, your dealings with the brethren, your dealings with unbelievers, your dealings with new believers. You must be sincere. Men of sincerity. Number two, men with pure motives. Men with pure motives. What is your motive? What motivates you to do what you are doing? Are you doing what you are doing to be recognized? Are you doing what you are doing so that you can become known? Are you doing what you are doing so that you can become popular? Are you doing what you are doing so that the brethren can hail you as a good brother or a good sister? Or you are doing it because you are one that is commissioned and sent by God? But like men of sincerity, verse 17, the Amplified Classic, and the purest motive as commissioned and sent by God. We speak his message in Christ, the Messiah, in the very sight and presence of God. You must do it like one that is commissioned, like one that is sent by God. Hallelujah. You must do it as if your whole life depends on it. Because for this reason you were born. For this reason you were saved. Hallelujah. He saved you so that you can become a vehicle to save others. He saved you so that you 
wherever you go, you can spread forth his fragrance. You have been commissioned and sent by him. For if any man is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, give me verse 17. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature or a new creation. If any person is in Christ, engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, is a new creation. A new creature altogether. Say new. New. New creation. A new creature. The old, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Shout hallelujah. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. Do I have such a witness in the house? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It says, Behold, the fresh and the new has come. A new man. A brand new man. Read on verse 18. The man that is commissioned, the man that is on a mission. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. He received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself. And he did what? Gave to us the what? The ministry of reconciliation. That by word and deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. Shout hallelujah. That is your ministry. And you can do that by spreading forth his fragrance wherever you go. So that he can bring you into harmony with himself. Hallelujah. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. By word and by our deed. By our actions. Many times you don't have the accurate words to speak because you are not permitted. In some workplaces, you cannot preach the gospel openly. Thank God that Nigeria is different. But in some countries, you dare not. But there's a provision in God through your deeds. Your deeds of kindness. Your deeds of excellence. The way you carry out your ministry, your job, in your marketplace. Those things can speak. You are easy and is able, you are able to spread for the fragrance of Christ through those media much more than words. Action, they say, speaks louder than words. Has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. Second Corinthians 5. Give me verse 19. It was God personally present in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. Not counting up and holding against men their trespasses. If God is to hold you to your trespasses, even, see, even just this week alone, do you think you will stand? Just this week. Let's take this week alone. If God were to hold you to your trespass, but he has canceled them and committed to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration of favor. May you spread for the fragrance of God's favor in the name of Jesus. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration to favor. 20. We'll stop at 21. Verse 20. So we are Christ ambassadors. Hallelujah. God making his appeal as it were through us. He's appealing through you. When you carry his fragrance, he's appealing through you. We, as Christ's personal representatives, we beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered to you and be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. For our sake, he made Christ to be seen. Who knew no sin? So that in and through him, we might become endued with, viewed as being in, an example of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be, approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him by his goodness. Shout hallelujah. This is his expectation of you. This is his expectation of me. Hallelujah. That you and I, we spread forth his fragrance. That you and I, we become his captives so that he can lead us without any controversy. If you are not yet a captive, then you are still... You can still do what you like. But when you have become his captive, he has captivated your heart. You are one with him. You obey him. You carry him everywhere. And you are able to spread forth that fragrance wherever you go.
I pray that that will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. That is what God's expectation is for us. Is when we have done all of this, that Zechariah chapter 8 can become our reality. Shout hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. On Sunday, we'll be going into Zechariah and tying it up and seeing how these things can lead us to the reality of Zechariah 8, 20 to 23. I want you to lift up your voice tonight and pray for yourself. I say, Lord, help me. Use me. I release myself to be used of you. Lord, help me. Come and captivate my heart. Captivate my heart. Make me your captive, Lord. Make me one with you. I release myself to you in the name of Jesus. I release myself to you, Lord. Help me and make me your captive. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You said you'll be bringing opportunities. You're opening doors of opportunities to us this year. Help us to recognize the right opportunity in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, to recognize the right opportunities, the doors that you will be opening to us in the name of Jesus. And if those doors are tests, help us. Help us not to be led by the opportunity, but to still be able to yield to the leading of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Help us to recognize those opportunities that are for us, that are just ours alone in the name of Jesus. For we know that we are not led by opportunists. We are not opportunists. But we are led by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Help us to recognize the right doors of opportunity. Like Paul did. Let your peace be the umpire of your will in our hearts. Then help us. And where we do not find your peace, let us move on. Knowing that there is no witness in our spirit. This is our desire, Lord. Help us. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to become your captive. So that you can lead us as part of Christ's triumphal procession. Help us to become one with you. To be in union with you. To be joined closely to, even to you, in the name of Jesus. Help us to become your captive. Captivate my heart, O oh Lord. Captivate the hearts of your people, O oh Lord. Help us so that you can lead us freely without any controversy. Captivate our hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, captivate our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Lord, captivate our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Captivate our hearts, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we know you want to use us to spread the fragrance and the aroma of your knowledge everywhere. We yield ourselves so that you can use us to spread your fragrance. So that you can use us to spread your aroma. So that you can use us to spread your fragrance everywhere. At home, at school. Wherever, in our shops, in our career places, in our marketplaces, on the farm, in the field, everywhere. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to spread forth your aroma, the aroma of your knowledge everywhere we go. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to spread forth your fragrance everywhere in our various spheres of influence, in our marketplaces, in our schools, in our trading places, in the market square, everywhere we find ourselves, in our neighborhood, in our compound. Help us, Lord, within our family, within our extended families. Help us to spread forth your fragrance in the name of Jesus. Lord, the fragrance we spread manifest in two dimensions. When we find ourselves before those, that, that aroma is an aroma of death. Help us to walk away. Help us to be able to discern even the dimension and the, of the manifestation of your aroma wherever we find ourselves. To some, it's an aroma that brings death. They may hate us. They may distance themselves. They may repulse us. Help us to be discerning enough. And to some, it will be an aroma that brings life, who have been, especially to those who have been saved. An aroma accompanied by favor. An aroma accompanied by acceptance. Help us to be able to discern this environment that we find ourselves in the name of Jesus. And teach us the right thing to do in such an environment. Teach us the right thing to do before such customers in the name of Jesus. Lord, are we equal to such a task? No, not in ourselves. 
our sufficiency is from God. Equip us, empower us, empower us, O God. Our sufficiency is not in ourselves, but in you, O God. Help us and empower us by your spirit. For we know it's not by power, neither is it by might, but only by your spirit. Lord, we are trusting you that you will empower us by your spirit. Empower us by your spirit for our sufficiencies of God who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant in the name of Jesus. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us to yield ourselves to you so that you can minister through us. Help us never to frustrate your grace. Apostle Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of Christ. Help us not to nullify your grace. Help us not to set aside your grace, but to yield ourselves so that you can live in us and through us spread forth your own fragrance in the name of Jesus. Finally, Lord, help us not to be like many who make a trade of peddling your word. But Lord, help us to become men of sincerity. Men that are commissioned and sent on a mission. Men of sincerity. Men with the purest motives. Help us so that our motives are pure before you. So that we can spread for the fragrance of your knowledge. The knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ in your presence. In the name of Jesus. Help us. This is our cry. This is our plea, O oh Lord. As we enter even into the fullness of our consolidation. Help us to imbibe. To imbibe these expectations. So that indeed your word may become activated and not just activated, but may become permanent to us. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen, amen. What, a, what an awesome moment in his presence tonight. Shout hallelujah. Is a long church. I said, how do we frustrate the grace of God in our life? How can one frustrate the grace of God? Amen. Thank you. Galatians 2, please give us quickly. 20 and 21. The question, let me help him to rephrase the question. He said, how can we frustrate the grace of God upon our lives? The first question is, if I may help you to reframe, is it possible for the grace of God to be frustrated? Then how? Right? Good. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. Hallelujah. So how can we frustrate the grace of God? That's the question. You want to help us to answer it? Please raise your hand. Because he's the only one that asked the question. So if you know the answer because you didn't raise your hand, tell us. If you don't answer, I will call you. Everybody, you must say something. Senate President, put our hands together for her. Thank you. Sin can frustrate the grace of God in one's life. Jesus said, in sin, that grace may abound. So sin can Amen. frustrate the grace of God. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Sin can frustrate the grace of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, how else can we? Okay, she has more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Titus 2, 11. It says, the grace of God has appeared to all men to and say God's no salvation. to every form of ungodliness and every unright things. And that part, he said, he will prepare us to be able to live righteously and godly in our life. So the grace of God will make you to say no to every form of ungodliness that has appeared to all men. Once you have the truth, there's always a grace to help you
to be able to do the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together. That's a powerful one. There is a grace that brought salvation. And uh, if you still continue in ungodly, worldly lust, and all of those things, you frustrate that grace. That hallelujah. Can I have an amen? amen? Good. Any other person? In the context of, yes, HOC prayer, give Sister Fola Kame the mic. Can the grace of Praise God be frustrated? Lord. Hallelujah. I think what uh, Apostle Paul is saying there, of my own knowledge, like there is law and there is grace. The grace is being given by our Lord Jesus Christ and the law of the Jews. So whatever you do in their era, if you offend, if the law cut off on you, you will be punished for it. But in grace... You may not be punished. So he's saying that the fact that the grace is available for me, that does not mean that I should misbehave or do things the way I need to do it. My own understanding. Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? amen. Let's put our hands together for her. Amen. Good. So, if you are living according to the law, you are frustrating grace. Hallelujah. Any other person? Glory to God. Please go back to Galatians 2, 19, uh, 20. Okay. Precious voices, HOC. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think to answer this question, we'll start from the question, what is grace? Grace is undeserved favor. And first of, we didn't deserve Christ to come to die for us. Yet he did it because he loved us. So, yes, we can frustrate, so like we can see in Galatians 2, 20 to 21. And like my senior president rightfully said, sin can make us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for her. Amen. Various perspectives. Let's make quickly closing on this. When you're reading the scriptures, and the, the smartest way to start, all the answers are correct, by the way. Sin easily We frustrate the grace of God upon our lives. There is no discounting it. You can't discount it. And I love the back of scripture, Titus 2.11. The grace of God that brought salvation has appeared to all men so that we may live godly lives and turn away from worldly laws and all of those and become the righteousness of God in Christ. So that's clear. Amen? And we'll go back to Galatians 12. Galatians 2, rather. I just want to show you. In the context where he said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Galatians 2. says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So number one, if you are not living your life by faith, what are you doing? Huh? You are frustrating the grace of God. And one of the ways, if you are not living your life by faith, is when you are sinning, right? Praise God. But my emphasis, remember we are talking about spreading the fragrance of Christ. So if you are living your life, not conscious that you are carrying God's presence, and you are living it anyhow, because for you to sin, you are carrying God to sin. Can I have an Amen. So, he says, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness were through the law, like has been mentioned, Christ died for no purpose. So, we frustrate the grace of God when we live in a faithless manner, number one, when we are not conscious that we are carriers of God. 
And of course, if we are living a life of sin, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. May we not frustrate the grace of God. Amen. The grace of God that brought salvation to us, may we not frustrate it. Amen. Shall we continue in sin and expect what? Romans chapter 6 verse 1. And that's a summary of what Senate President said. Shall we continue in sin and expect grace to abound? So when you're living a life of sin, you're frustrating grace. Hallelujah. May you not frustrate grace. Please put your hands together for the person who asked the question and for all those who have contributed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you clear, sir? Amen. Thank you very much for the question. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we are grateful. <clears throat> on Sunday, we'll be connecting the dots because this is the preparation. If we don't allow him to captivate our hearts, if we don't allow him to use us to spread forth his fragrance, what will happen? Zechariah 8 will become a mirage. It's not going to happen. It's as we spread forth his fragrance, as we allow him to use us to spread his fragrance, that things will begin to happen. Peoples and nations will begin to come. Inhabitants of cities will begin to come in our businesses, in our careers, in the things that we do. Hallelujah. And we're showing us the nexus, the intersection of these two. In Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we are grateful to you. Thank you for the privilege you have given us tonight. To come learn at your feet, especially to examine the prophetic word unto us. Lord, as you have opened up the grounds to us, help us captivate our hearts. Use us to carriers of your grace and your fragrance. Every where that we go, especially in our spheres of influence, in the name of Jesus. Help us to live in this consciousness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. May we take our benediction from Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. One to go. And may the God of peace himself sanctify me true and true. Separate me from profane things. Make me pure and holy consecrated to God. And may my spirit and my soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Faithful is he who is calling me to himself and he is utterly trustworthy and he also will do it, will fulfill his call upon my life by hallowing and keeping me in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I will see you on Sunday. Don't come alone. Hallelujah. And remember, tomorrow, Friday, is our church in the house. Every Friday, 6 to 7 p.m., we meet in our various churches in the house. You have one, hallelujah, that is close to you. Make sure that you look for it. If you do not know, 